Good morning. My name is Francis Edwards, host of our podcast titled Proclaim Jesus. Welcome to our next episode titled What Will Be Your Legacy? And our scripture lesson is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 18. 1 through 33. And I'm not going to read 33 verses, which is the entire chapter, but will give you a commentary overview of chapter 18. In last Sunday's message, in chapter 12, I spoke of David's self-conviction based on a parable after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and conceived a child. And he also plotted the death of her husband. Fortunately, he repented and God forgave him. Unfortunately, the generational curse remains because of a father's sin Through the prophet Nathan, God cursed the house of David and said, The sword will never leave your house. Since then, the family been plagued by murder, rape, incest, and rebellion. In this chapter, I will be speaking of Absalom, the son of King David's second generation. Now, most Prominent people, successful leaders, or those who feel they have contributed greatly to society, like presidents of the United States, would carefully consider what they want their legacy to be. Often, one of the first thing a former president does after leaving office is to publish their journey of all they accomplished called a memoir. They want to be remembered for the good, not the bad, things they've done since in office. In this text, King David's son, Absalom, prayed to be remembered and celebrated for generations. He knew he would not have children to carry on his legacy or memory. In verse 18,
Unto Absalom were born three sons and one daughter. The sons died during childhood. In 2 Samuel 14, 27. So, he erected a monument to himself in Jerusalem. He thought future generation could come to the moment to the monument and remember his greatness. But Absalom's decision to delay pursuing his father David until he had mustered a large army. And that was exactly what David needed. David took this time to organize his army under his top three commanders. He took the advice of his generals and stayed home. He was beyond the age of fighting with the army in verses 1 through 4. Yet, he left his army with one piece of advice. Be gentle with the young man, Absalom, for my sake. In verse 5, his compassion to Absalom stand in contrast to Saul, who was enraged when Jonathan supported David in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30 to 34. Salam's army was quickly rooted. As Absalom fled on his mule, his hair was cut in the branches of a tree in verse 9. His hair, a symbol of his pride and vanity, became his undoing. In this helpless situation, Joab pierced him three times with javelins. Then ten of Joab's men finished him off. In verse 15, they cast his body in the forest and piled stones on top of it. There was no state funeral for Absalom, no burial in a family tomb. Absalom intended to leave a good legacy. But it was not who he wanted to be remembered. Have you ever had to be a bearer of bad news? For most managers, 
The worst part of their job is having to inform the people they have been laid off or perhaps you were the first person to break the news that someone's dear friend has lost their battle with cancer or some other disease. But worse, bringing bad news of a sudden, sudden death. Even if the news does not directly affect us as the bearer, it has its own painful experiences. Absalom's revolt has failed. The priest, Aimeas, wanted to bring this news to the king in verse 19. Joab understood that Absalom's death would not be good news to the king and did not want to be the bearer of that bad news. So he instead entrusted the message to a foreigner. A Kushite in verse 21. Now, the Kushites are the descendants of Cush, the son of Ham, and grandson of Noah. Yet, Anameas was undeterred. He ran after the Cushite. And was the first to reach the king. He supported or he reported to King David that the battle had been won, but was silent regarding the fate of Absalom in verse 28 to 29. The Cushites then appeared and told David of Absalom's fate. In verse 33, David had always been a man of words. From the shepherd boy who challenged Goliath to the psalmist who described God as his shepherd. Now we find him repeating Absalom's name. He said, Oh, Absalom, my son, my son, my son. Absalom in verse 33. Now, why does the Bible or why does the biblical author describe David's grief in such vivid this details? Why? 
You see, David's grief is more than just sorrow at the loss of his son. Packed into this expression of grief is a note of regret. David knew that this was the fulfillment of God's judgment. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10. While God forgave his sin, he is still reaping the consequences of his sin. He committed, he, he, he's still reaping the consequences of his sin he committed back then. David's grief and regret remain or reminds us of the painful consequences of sin. It also points us to the only one who can deliver us, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Jesus also wept at the weight of sin in Matthew 26, 38. Yet, his obedience to the point of death means life and salvation for us all. Now, what legacy will you live? What your children may pattern after? What life story are you writing today that others will read and remember? Each day, your choice to serve and follow God will shape that legacy. And this concludes my message for today. Thank you for listening and have a great day. In Jesus' name, Amen.